Yes, so today sir. we'll see STM32 ARM timer programming. Right. So first of all, we'll see what do you mean by an 8-bit up counter. So counter is nothing but it'll be having a variable. Whenever we are, it is getting a clock, it will keep on incrementing in the case of up counter. So here, whenever it is getting a clock, it is incrementing from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 255. After reaching the maximum value that is 255, when again a clock is given, it will roll over back to zero. So how will we understand that rollover has taken place or, or overflow has taken place? Generally, there will be a flag known as overflow flag. It will be set as one. Similarly, in the case of 8-bit down counter, how it will be working? Initially, you will be loading the maximum 8-bit value that is 255. Whenever it is getting a clock, it will keep on decrementing to 254, 253, like that up to zero. When it is reaching zero, again, if it is getting a clock, it will roll over to maximum possible value, 255. And how will you uh, will be uh, understand this or identify that this rollover has taken place? Another variable known as underflow flag will be set. So this is an example how the 8-bit up and down counter is working. So the same timer counter. So I, I have already told that timer is nothing but a counter which keep track of time whenever it is getting a signal. Say in our uh, case of uh, our watch, how it is counting, it is a timer, how it is working. Whenever one second is over, the second variable will be incrementing. Whenever one minute is over, minute variable will be incrementing so timer is nothing but a counter right so in this example the same timer i am using it for counting a signal say for example i need to count the number of persons entering this room so what i will be doing i will be putting an ir transmitter and an ir receiver in the door whenever the ir receiver is generating a signal i will increment the counter variable so whenever the sensor is giving a signal that will be given as a clock to the counter so that it will keep on incrementing. And when I need to clear this counter, I will clear the, I will give a clear signal. This is how by using a timer, you are using it, you are uh, uh, counting certain events. So this is known as counter mode of operation. Counter mode of operation. Similarly, there is another mode of operation known as compare mode of operation. So in this compare mode of operation, what is happening? You can consider it some it as a say alarm clock. So what will alarm clock do? We will be setting a particular alarm time. Whenever my timer value is equal to the preset alarm time, it will generate an event. Right? Right? So here you can see a clock generator will be there. It will be generating a clock so that the counter variable will be incrementing and each time when the counter variable is incrementing it will be compared with the predefined the alarm time for example right and whenever these two are equal it will generate an event right so this is known as compare mode of operation right so there will be a compare register where there you will be specifying the particular timer value that you need to compare and each time when the counter or timer counter is counting or incrementing the compare value will be compared with the counter value and if both are equal it will generate an event that is known as compare mode of operation of timer similarly there is another mode of operation known as capture mode of operation what do you mean by capture mode this one you can consider it something similar to a uh, say stopwatch. So what does a stopwatch do? When you are giving a start signal, the stopwatch will keep on incrementing. So that is nothing but your counter. Counter will keep on incrementing. And whenever you need to stop the stopwatch, you will give a finish signal. So what will happen? Whatever value was currently present in the up counter or the counter, that will be taken to a register known as capture register right so you are able to capture the elapsed time or the elapsed counter value from the counter register 
to a capture register. This mode of operation is known as capture mode of operation. So by using this, you are able to capture the time taken or number of counts which has been elapsed. So these are the basic three modes of operation of timer. Counter mode, compare mode and capture mode. Let us take the example of a system tick timer. This is an internal block diagram of a system tick timer. So system tick timer is nothing but it is a 24 bit down counter. 24 bit down counter. So here you can see two registers are there. One is known as reload value register. Another one is current value register. So you can configure the system tick timer. How will you configure it? You can configure the value that is to be loaded in the current value register initially. So I told system tick timer is a down counter. So from which value onwards you need to keep on counting down. Based on that value, your time taken or delay generated will be varying. Right. Let us take each clock cycle is taking say one microsecond for example only I am telling. So if I am counting from if I am giving a reload value as 10 what will happen whenever the system tick timer is getting a clock it will keep on counting down. When it is getting one clock it will become 9, 8, 7 etc up to 0. Right. So when it is counting from 10 to 0 total 11 cycles has taken. Each clock cycle is say taking one microsecond. So what will be the total time delay taken? 11 microseconds. Right. And when it is reaching zero, what will happen? It is shown by setting a particular flag bit known as count flag. So whenever the current value register is reaching zero, count flag will be set and it will load what value? It will load the value present in reload value register again to current value register. So initially reload value register content will be stored on to current value register and whenever it is getting a clock it will keep on decrementing and when it is reaches zero that overflow condition is represented by setting the count flag right when it is reaching zero count flag will be set and it will give the reload signal. What do you mean by reload? Previous value, whatever value is presently in reload value register will be again loaded to current value register. This process will be going on continuously. Right. So based on how much delay you need to generate, you can configure the reload value register. Right. And there are two clock sources for system tick timer. One is known as external clock, another one is system clock. How can you select this one of the clock? By using this multiplexer. By using the clock source bit, if this bit is zero, external clock will be given as input to current value register counter. Or if it is one, system clock will be given as input to this count counter or system tick time. And this clock will be enabled only when the enable bit is one. That is why the output of clock source is given to an AND gate and another input to the AND gate is enabled. So if it is enabled is one, then only the clock will be connected to the current value register or system tick timer. So this is how system tick timer is working. So this is a register known as system tick timer control register. Right? So it is having 31 bits. In that only four bits you need to configure. So the zeroth bit is known as enable bit growth bit is known as enable bit. So this bit should be 1 so that system tick timer will be counting down or it will enable the system tick timer. So I have written 1 here. Next bit whether you need to generate an interrupt on overflow. In my case I don't need that. So I am making interrupt enable as 0. Second bit is clock source bit. In my case I am selecting system clock as my input to the system tick timer. So I am writing the second bit as 1. Right? Finally, the count flag bit. 
initially what will be the count flag bit it will be zero so this is how you are configuring the system tick timer so when you are configuring this what will happen the system tick timer will keep on decrementing from the value what i have stored in reload value register right so i need to store the reload value in the reload value register then i will be giving this so from that value it will keep on decrementing and when it is reaching zero what will happen to this count flag count flag will be set right so once after giving this configuration in control register you need to check whether control registers 16th bit is 1 right if system tick control registers 16th bit is 1 what does it mean count flag is set so when the count flag is set what will happen automatically the reload value register will be content of reload value register will be taken to current value register right so this is how you are configuring the control register system tick timer control register so initially count flag will be zero right and once the system tick timer is enabled the down counter will keep on decrementing from the value that you have stored in reload value register and whenever that value is reaching zero count flag will be automatically set so what i need to do in the program in the program i need to check whether 16th bit is 1 so how will i do that i need to split that 16th bit alone and mask other bits to zero so how will you do that we need to perform and with 0x 1 0 0 0 that means you are extracting 16th bit alone and you are checking whether it is equal to 1 right so if it is 1 that means count flag is set otherwise it is not set so it will keep on decrementing so this is the timing diagram showing the system tick timer counting process so what i told initially i will be loading a value to system tick timer reload value register so from that particular value whenever it is getting a clock it will keep on decrementing right so reload value register will be loaded on to which register current value register and the decrementing process will be done in current value register whenever it is getting a clock right so when it gets a clock current value register value keep on decrementing and when it is reaching zero count flag will be set once the count flag is set again the current value register will be reloaded with the reload value register and this process will be continuously going on once the reload value register is loaded into current value register again when it is getting a clock it will keep on decrementing when it is reaching zero count flag will be set reload value register will be loaded on to current value register this process will be going on continuously right so based on the value what you are storing in reload value register this delay time can be adjusted so if i am putting the reload value register somewhere here so what will be happening the time taken will be lesser in order to make it overflow or count flag set so you will be loading a particular value in reload value register then the counter will keep on decrementing when it is overflowing or when the count flag is set i can identify that my delay time is over so this will be generally used for delay generation or keeping track of time of process so this is a reload value register and current value register so both are of size 24 bit why it is 24 bit because i have told that our system tick timer is nothing but a 24 bit down counter so it should store only 24 bits that is why it is storing it is having only 24 bit in both the registers then this is how you are generating delay using system tick timer right so what will be the total delay generated by system tick timer it is nothing but time taken for one clock for one cycle into the number or into the value stored in reload value register why it is like that i told whenever it is getting a clock 
it will decrement by 1 so if i am re if i am writing the reload value as 10 it will keep on decrementing from 10 to uh, 10 to 0 that is 11 cycles and each increment each decrementing will be taking one cycle so the total time taken will be total number uh, total value or the value stored in reload value register into time taken for one clock cycle so i am representing the value stored in reload value register as n into what will be the time taken for one clock for time being i have selected system clock as my input clock so what will be the time taken by system clock 1 by system clock or 1 by frequency system clock is represented in frequency in my case in stm32 by default system clock is connected to hsi clock that is high speed internal clock high speed internal clock is nothing but 16 megahertz so in stm32 system clock by default it is connected to a clock source known as high speed internal clock that is nothing but 16 megahertz so what will be the time taken for one clock 1 by 16 megahertz so if you are taking an example i need to generate a delay of one second for a frequency of one hertz then what should be the reload value what value we need to load into reload value register so how will you calculate that the same equation i am re rearranging it so that I can find the value of n. So n equal to total delay required into system clock. Then I am rearranging this. So what is the total time delay required? One second. What is the system clock? 16 megahertz. That is 16 and 60. Right? So when you are multiplying this, you will get the value of n as this one. 16 and 60. So if I am moving this value to reload value register and when you are enabling the system tick timer it will keep on decrementing and when it is reaching zero one second delay will be generated right this is how you are configuring the system tick timer so this is in this program what i am doing is i am going to toggle green led connected in stm32 f446 re nucleo 64 bit board right so in this in this board the green led is marked as ld2 it is connected to port a5 pin right so in this stm32 446re total ports are a b c d e f g h i till i ports are available in that port a is fifth pin it is connected to a green led onboard green led so i am going to toggle this green led in one second that is my aim right previously you have done the led blinking program by creating a for loop delay it may, will not be accurate but now i am going to create a one second delay using system tick time so that i will get accurate or precise so for that what is the first step i am writing rcc ahb1 enable equal to or equal to 1 that means what you are doing you are setting 1 to zeroth bit of ahb1 enr register what does it do we are enabling clock for gpioa because in stm32 all the peripheral the clock to all the peripherals will be by default almost all the peripherals by default the clock pins will be disabled in order to reduce the power consumption so whichever peripheral i need to configure i need to enable clock to that peripheral right so in this controller we are having two registers known as ahb1 enr ahb2 enr apb1 enr apb2 enr these are nothing but the enabled registers what does it enable it will enable clock to that particular peripheral right so here by setting the zeroth bit of ahb1 enr we are enabling clock to gpio a peripheral this you have already seen in uh, gpio configuration example right then in the next these two step 
you are configuring two registers known as mode bit mode bit mode bit for which peripheral gpio a right so why what you are doing here in the other controllers also you may have seen almost all the pins of a controller is having multiple functionality so whenever i need to configure a particular functionality to a pin you need to configure some of the registers which is used for configuring the functionality so here in stm32 mode bits mode registers are used for configuring the functionality of a particular pin so gpio a mode bit is used for configuring the functionality of gpio a pin right so for configuring the functionality of each pin you are using two bits of mode selection register mode register so initial two bits are used for configuring the functionality of if you are using gpio a initial two bits are used for configuring the functionality of pa.0 pin for pa0 pin next two bits are used for configuring the functionality of pa1 pin next two bits are used for configuring the functionality of pa2 pin etc so if you want to configure the functionality of pa5 which bit you need to use bit number bit number 10 and 11 is used for configuring pa5 right you need to split this value into groups of 2 right so bit number 10 and 11 is used for configuring pa5 in 10 and 11 what value you should write if you are writing 0 0 it will be configured as input if you are writing 0 1 that pin will be configured as output if you are writing 1 0 it will be having alternate function configured to that pin right so here since i need to configure pa5 as output i am writing bit number 11 and 10 as 0 1 right so how will i write 0 1 bit number 11 should be cleared that is why i am writing tilde c0 that means bit number 10 and 11 i am clearing then i am writing or equal to 4 that means 10th bit alone i am setting so here 10 and 11 i am clearing here 10th bit i am setting that means i am writing 0 1 to bit number 11 and 10 of mode selection bit why i need to configure it in configure pa5 in output mode of operation right so these three steps are used for configuring pa5 as output first you are configuring it you are configuring or enabling the clock then you are configuring it as output pin then from here onwards you are starting your system configuration for system tick timer so first of all system tick load register this is nothing but your reload register in that reload register i am loading that value 16 and 6 zeros minus 1 why this minus 1 is there because if i am loading if say for example i am loading 10 how many clock cycles it will take 10 to 9 it will keep on decrementing it will keep on decrementing from 10 to 9 that means total 11 clock cycles it will be taking total 11 clock cycles it will be taking right but if i am configuring as 10 i need to get only 10 clock cycles so since it is decrementing from 10 to 0 11 clock cycles will be taken so if you want to get only 10 clock cycles what should i do i need to subtract 1 so instead of giving 10 as my value i need to give 9 as my value right to the reload value register so it will keep on decrementing from 9 to 0 total 10 clock cycles will be there so we have seen in the calculation that i need to have only 16 and 6 zeros clock cycles in order to generate one second delay so what value should i give 16 and 6 zeros minus 1 right that is 15999 if you are counting if you are decrementing from 15999 till 0 it will take total this many cycle and it will generate one second delay that is why i am loading 16 and 6 zeros minus 1 then this value register means it is current value register 
I am initializing the current value register as zero. For time being, I am initializing current value register as zero. Right? Then control register. What I am writing? I am writing five. Why this five? The, I am disabling the interrupt. I am using system clock, and I am enabling the system tick timer. So once after loading the reload value register with the particular value. If I am writing control register as five, what will happen? The system tick timer will start functioning. How it will start functioning? Whatever value I have stored in reload value register will be copied on to current value register, and whenever it is getting a clock, it will keep on decrementing. So here it will keep on decrementing from fifteen nine 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 onward. And what should I do? I need to check whether the decrementing is over. How will I check that? I need to check for the count flag. Whenever the current value register is reaching zero, count flag will be set. So how will I do that? In while one, I am checking whether in the control register, sixteenth bit is set. What is sixteenth bit? Count flag. So first of all, I need to split that bit alone. How will I do that? System control. And zero x one zero zero zero. That means you are splitting that bit. So if the value after performing this operation is not zero, the this statement will be executed. If this is not zero, that means count flag is set. If the sixteenth bit is set, count flag is set. So this is not zero. That means the if condition is true. If this is not set. If condition is true, so what should I do? I need to perform the toggling. How will I perform the toggling? In output data register, I need to write two zero. Two zero means which bit will be set? Two means fifth bit. Why? Because PA five bit I need to toggle. That means fifth bit I need to write it one. Right? Then again, when the system tick timer is overflowing, I need to make it zero. Again, when the system tick timer is overflowing, I need to make it one like that. Right? That is why I am using XOR equal to operation. So one XOR one is zero, zero XOR one is one like that. So whenever the system tick timer is overflowing, you are making PA five bit. That is in the output direction register fifth bit. You are setting or clearing or tog. That means you are toggling that bit. Whenever the system tick timer is overflowing, this is how you are configuring the system tick timer for generating a one second delay. 